We'll move on to this. MSNBC censors NSA whistleblower Russ Tice minutes before interview. Boiling Frog's post broke the news on the NSA's targeting of political candidates, elected officials, federal judges, law firms, and activists, including candidate Barack Obama, revealed by veteran NSA officer Russ Tice. Tice went on the record for the first time with new revelations and names of official culprits involved in the NSA's illegal practices and explained in detail how the National Security Agency targets, sucks in, stores, and analyzes illegally obtained content from the masses in the United States of America. And for more on this, we have the special report from Leanne McAdoo outlining the, uh, these big tech companies' ties to the NSA. Tech companies tied up with the NSA's internet surveillance scandal have released government data requests this week in an effort to maintain user trust when it comes to the handling of their personal information. Combined figures from Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Google total about 40,000 requests from law enforcement since December 2012. The most common requests concern fraud, homicides, kidnappings, burglaries, and hoping to prevent a suicide. Noticeably absent are requests concerning national security. That's because a government gag order prevents the tech giants from releasing that information. These figures only represent user data that was provided after being served a warrant or subpoena. It does not represent FISA requests, which is what the NSA uses as part of the PRISM program. According to numbers from the Boundless Informant program, these figures are 100,000 times less than the 3 billion pieces of data it mined from U.S. servers in March alone. According to leaked PRISM slides, the government has direct access to server systems. But one tech CEO said that would be impossible unless the government had breached the servers. Now, Obama referred to the NSA receiving metadata in bulk. He said the bits of information called were telephone numbers, a location, and the duration of the phone call, assuring that there was no names or no content in the database. But if there is no content in the database, then how does the FBI retroactively gain access to the content of your phone calls. It's not a voicemail, it's just a conversation. There's no way they actually can find out what happened, right? Unless she tells them. No, there is a way. We certainly have ways in, in national security investigations to find out exactly what was said in that conversation. Welcome, welcome to America. The, uh, the, all of that stuff is being captured as we speak, whether we know it or like it or not. NSA whistleblower William Binney spoke of an even earlier surveillance tool in a recent interview with Democracy Now! Uh, the NARIS devices that they deployed starting, I think, around 2003 onto the fiber optic networks were capturing the emails and voice over IP, and that was being stored. So that's why they have to build places like uh, Bluffdale in Utah, that's a big storage facility, because they're collecting so much data. The content is really the bulk that needs to be, that they're storing. Now, Binney went on to say that the content collected on the fiber optic lines only represented about 80% of what's on the Internet. But by going to the tech company servers, the NSA is able to fill in the holes and get a complete picture of what is actually on the Internet. All that data will be stored in the Utah Spy Center, which Binney says will hold up to 500 years worth of all the world's communication. And its main focus will be analysis and code breaking. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and this has been an InfoWars Nightly News Alert. All right, thank you, Leanne, for that report. And I just don't see why people can't draw the lines. And I gave this example, I believe, last week. Think about Xbox. There's a lot of talk about the Xbox, Xbox One coming out. Xbox is made by Microsoft. Microsoft is alleged in the PRISM scandal. And, but they have these things such as the Xbox One that have retina scans, uh, voice recognition software. Uh, they can tell if you're enjoying the game. They can tell how good your heartbeat is going, but nobody thinks that this thing could be used for uh, surveillance purposes. It's just very naive to me to think such a thing. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.